Hello there, welcome. We're back with another Levia gameplay today, and today we're playing against a very interesting Rhino list. A Rhino list that is it should actually be a meta contender right now. It works pretty similarly to a Levia, but instead of her blood dead cards and demi hero, the this Rhino can obviously intimidate. Um Rhino plays with a with the Ravenous Meat Axe and uses all the agility he's getting from the new new additions and heavy hitters. And this way, he's actually putting out pretty insane numbers that are very similar to the, the numbers Leviah can put out. For game plan, since this is an aggro matchup, we want to keep our life totals high as long as possible so we can get a nice banish zone going and then after our consume flip, get quite a lot of value out of this. The problem, obviously, is that with all these intimidates that Rana has, that will not be as easy as usual. Now, I've managed to get a bit of graveyard fill in on the very first turn. And now we need to see what Rhino is throwing at us. Against these intimidate Rhino lists, you want to put your blocks in as early as possible in the combat chain because obviously there will be more intimidates to come. In this case, since we don't have any blood that's stacked yet, I'm just going for the 2 card 8 with, with the swing big here and want to arsenal the Dread Screamer for a larger turn later on. Ryan is also playing the Monstrous Veil, the headpiece from Heavy Hitters, which is just a free Intimidate more on the turn he wants to put the pressure on. And we're just taking this so we can throw something back. At this moment, I'm not actually realizing how, how hard the Rhino wants to commit for those Quicken tokens. He's just going to block the Swing Big out so he gets a Quicken. And then in, his, in the turn after this one, he'll be able to throw multiple attacks. So if you know you're playing against a Intimidate Rhino, Boarding out the swing swing bigs might actually be the, the way to go. But obviously there are multiple Rhino builds going on. And if you're playing against a tank Rhino, those swing bigs aren't too bad. Now with this hand, where if we roll a second action point on the scabbies, we're actually able to go quite wide here. We can go for a claw, the dread screamer, and the swing big off of only two blues. That makes that a or card 17 actually. So and right now we're seeing what the Rhino can do with, with this Quicken token. Discarding a beast with it on the B-Tex that gets go again from Quicken. And then he's even throwing something after that. Also that meat, meat X came in on a one card five basically because you're only pitching and then you're drawing and discarding so that's what i'm i'm saying about those insane numbers um there's a consideration to be made here of keeping that extra blue in our hand and playing the smash back elhorn out but since i since this is an aggro matchup as i said we want to keep our life totals as high as possible for as long as possible so I'm going to throw that blue card into here. Had I known that this is <laughs> an Intimidate Rhino, I wouldn't have gone with the Gambler's Gloves. Those are more for the more defensive matchups. Apex Bonebreaker would have obviously been way better. Now, fortunately, we do get the second action point, so we can throw quite a bit of damage here. Once again, it's possible that Runner will block out the, the swing big. Although we might get blocks earlier.
So that that hand played out very well for us. Unfortunately, Reiner had quite a bit of a life lead after those great turns of his. So if he blocks out here, he's sitting quite well. Still with a life lead and a quicken token. We do have quite a bit of armor though. Especially in comparison to his suite, there's quite a bit more. Interestingly enough, he's play playing beaten trackers. Those work similar to Hoofs of the Shadow Beast, for example, where if you fulfill that condition, which is discarding a 6 attack, you can crack those and get an extra action point. So that's, that is insane on his on this turns, which he wants to go wide in. This Reiner build also is very good into other meta picks at the moment. Victor, Kasai and Dromai are all very, very popular picks and Reiner has quite a good matchup into all of those because they do want to block quite a bit and he obviously negates them from doing so. Therefore, he might even be, be better at uh, than Leviah at the moment. Into those defensive matchups, Leviah sometimes struggles to close up the game in a in a manner that, that suits her. If it takes too long, you acquire too much blood that. And then the consume flips flip becomes very awkward. So to all other Leviah players, I'd definitely give that the Dryna build a shot. It's also good into Kano, obviously, because you can play aggressive. Um, you can with the wind ups you can intimidate in there in the turn they want to go off in. So if for example they have one card in hand left and want to go for the Rega muffins, you can put your wind up on the stack and then that will trigger the intimidate first. The fact that our last hand already wasn't insane and this one isn't either. Sort of sad. I mean, if we get a second action point from Gambler's Gloves on this and we can convert into a Claw and Shadow Peed. Excuse me, Mark of the Beast and Shadow Peed. We don't get it though, it's just a 2 card 6 and we blocked some. Him discarding an on six here does give us a, an avenue back into this game, though. Now, if only those gamblers uh, have those scabbies, no, they don't. So we just throw a six. And then hope we can play around our flip later on. If taking those full. All six isn't a good sign though. There's, it's very likely he'll intimidate quite a bit and we even get two, two non-blocks in this hand. So quite, quite a difficult matchup there actually. Even with all those non-blocks, getting into the flip is, is very difficult against those intimidates. Now if somehow we can... Oh, even another one stay above the the 13 life points and get an action point on the scabbies we can throw two slithering shadow peats and flip which would be very nice so that is kind of our one out we got now and we do have the scowling flashback to keep us keep us healthy
we didn't get the blue dread screamer block in but we can still put the convulsions into here and some armor and just in case he breaks the combat chain the monster spell for example we should use the skip skins here as well Now, even if we don't get the, the action point, we can still throw Red Screamer and Slithering and wait with the flip one more turn. Because it's unlikely we're drawing into more Monon blocks next. Very unlikely. Um, so this might be a consideration. Need to throw in the, the Carrion Husk here. And just throwing a Shadow Pete would get us there but it is a very very low value turn for us it might might just not be something we are allowed to go for in this matchup not in in the way this game panned out At the moment, we also have four misses in the grave, so nothing too bad. That's just the usual stuff. But yeah, the only real play is Dread Screamer into Shadow Beat. But even the Dread Screamer misses, so this is not meant to be clearly. Now we are stuck with a, a non block in hand again. Obviously going for the consume flip though. And now he gets gets the Berserk. 13 life against Intimidate Runner is the place you want to be at. It's very quick to be, be lethal. Especially with a hand like this. Now if we're lucky, we no, we're not lucky. Instantly there's a block intimidated. Very likely there'll be another intimidate coming on this attack. So if we're even if the Shadow Pete gets intimidated, we can get out six, and he's probably throwing 20 this turn. So in any way, we are dead here. But yeah, a very interesting list. I'll definitely give it a shot. I'm wondering what the, the difficult matchups could be for, for Intimidate Reiner. Azalea is probably not good. So I guess everything that, that doesn't actually want to block should be quite okay against that, that list. But it's the Rhino still putting up good numbers even even without using Intimidate efficiently. So yeah, Azalea, Katsu also probably quite okay against this list. And Dash. That stuff. But against all those controly decks, more defensive styles, like as I said, Kasai, Victor, Omai. Oh this this is quite quite nice. So yeah, that's it for today. Maybe maybe no more Levaya content. Maybe it's a it's a Rana channel now. But We'll see. Gotta gotta check in tomorrow. See you then.